our number one game development tool just got a new free tier for non-commercial use. We are of course talking about Rider, which we have been using for over seven years already. And it's actually one of the few pieces of software we actually actively pay for because we just like it this much. They are sponsoring this video, but we have been actively paying them for a while already because we just love the software so much. So let me give you some reasons why. What even is Rider? Rider is an IDE, which is an integrated development environment, and it basically helps you with writing code easily. So what does it do for you? Well, it can simplify a lot of things, like building programs if you're not making games. But if you're making games, of course, like most of our audience, it gives you access to the compiler. So you know when, for example, you use the wrong syntax. You can also attach to Unity very easily by uh, clicking the attach button and actually debug your code. And of course, it supports things like automatic refactoring. So you can easily rename your methods, extract methods, rename variables, and so on. Another thing that's great about Rider is the fact that it's completely cross-platform. So, okay, we are Windows boys, but Chevy, he uses Mac and he can just run Rider just fine. It's also completely supported on Linux as well. Another great strength of Rider is the fact that it is completely engine agnostic. So, of course, we are the Unity dev boys here, but you can, it even supports things like GDScript, Unreal Blueprints, custom C++ engines, and of course, just plain old C-sharp and everything that is done with the cloud. So, Thomas, you just mentioned a minute ago that you actually pay for this. Why? Why do we use it and why do we prefer it over competitors? So, first of all, William is just a massive fan of the UI. He thinks it's so clean and minimalistic compared to competitors that he thinks it's his favorite. I really love the suggestions they give. It's like the IntelliSense, the code suggestions, and it even helps you learn new things because it gives you suggestions on, for example, uh, coding patterns and best practices really easily in the editor. Overall, we think it's a great value because we're a startup and they have a startup program where you only pay half of what the actual cost of the product is to get you started. But if you're one of our viewers, you can probably only dream about making money and you're only a hobby as a dev, so you can use the free non-commercial license to its fullest extent. So you now have a brief idea of what Rider is. Let me give you the actual reasons why we think this is so great and I'll give you five. So what are the benefits of Riders? I already briefly touched upon this, but I'll cover into the main one for me, which is IntelliSense. So first of all, IntelliSense is things like code completions, um, but they do it really intelligently. And honestly, you know us as a tier list boys, I guess. So uh, it, I think the suggestions are S tier for me. So let me give you some examples of what is really easy to use about Rider. First things first, we have here a little clause in our unicycle pizza time game. Let's say I wanted to lock something. Here at Byte.me, we have our own logging library. So if I say logging.log, and there it already happened. You probably didn't see it. What Rider automatically did was automatically import Byte.me games.logging, which is our namespace, which is one of the features about Rider, which is automatically importing dependencies. If I just delete the line real quick, you can also see Rider is highlighting some lines with a green squiggly line. So let's take a look at what they say. The, the most impressive button is probably Alt-Enter, and that's how you get suggestions from Rider. So you can see we have a couple of things we can do here. One of the things it suggests is inverting the if statement. So if we just press enter, you see Rider automatically changed our code and did what we asked it to do. Now, why is this important? This is just one of the examples where you can uh, see how Rider tries to learn you to write clean code. One of the biggest reasons of unreadable code is doing a lot of nesting. So you get an if statement, an if statement, an if statement. In this case, I showed you two if statements in each other. And if we do it for a second as well, they just basically invert it. And you can see the code is now just no indents. You can just read it from top to bottom. It is features like this that really can give your code quality a massive boost because what's also really impressive is that they can predict um, runtime errors. So for example, if I do a call a method and that method can sometimes be null, but a writer will give you a warning saying, hey mate, you know, this can be null. Are you sure you don't want to handle this properly? because it might crash while your uh, player is playing the game. One of the things that makes Rudder great as well is linting. What even is linting? Well, linting basically gives you guidelines on how your code should be written. Let me give you a quick example. If I make a, a method called damage and I say void damage, a couple of things happen. First of all, Rudder sees I can't type at all and gives me suggestions and says, hey, your method is never used. We'll just ignore this mode for a second. Then it also says, which is one of our linting settings, is always use a modifier. What I mean with this is private, public, internal, all those things, because we here at ByteBee just like it that way that we always show what just the accessibility level of our method is. And if we just add it, it's there. Then you will see it says, hey, you made a typo. Let's rename it. 
I'll do the A back and it's now damage, properly written. Ryder is still not happy because if we alt enter once again, it will say, hey, you wrote damage with a lowercase d. Methods need to be with an uppercase. So press it and now we have our beautiful method. This ensures that you, and if you're working in a team, especially then, all of you write consistent codes. This makes it much easier to read and understand each other's code. Of course, the examples I showed you might not be exactly what you wanted to do, but that's what also makes it great and it is you can completely configure how you want it to behave. So for example, if you don't want Rider to complain about not adding private keywords before your methods, completely fine. You can change it in the .editor config. Another great reason on why I like Rider so much is just how it handles debugging. First things first is, unlike a lot of the competitors, you don't have to start the game from your IDE. What I mean with that, I can start the game notice a bug and then attach while the game is running. Let me show you what I mean. If I start our game unicycle pizza time, let me just teleport myself to the finish real quick. And if I look there, there is our beautiful finish line. I can now press the attach button and just put a breakpoint anywhere I want and we will hit it even when it wasn't running before. Just like other IDEs, you can just put breakpoints and debug your code from there. But as you might have noticed before, if you do that, Unity will be completely frozen. You cannot interact with Unity while you have your breakpoint set because you're literally interrupting the loop from Unity. What's really cool here is if you put a breakpoint and you right click it, you can have a button here that says convert to Unity pause points. This is a really cool feature. Let me show you why. If I go back to my game now and actually move towards the finish line, you can see it seems like the game froze, but it didn't actually freeze. No, we hit a pause point. So what's different with a pause point? You can fully interact with Unity. Like you can see here, I can go to scene view. I can do anything as if it is still normally running. So basically what Rider does is it communicates with Unity, says when this line of code is hit, I will actually pause the game for you in Unity. This means that you can very easily see things. This is a great use case, for example, is when you shoot a bullet and you wanted to see it hit the character or whatever it hits, you can put a breakpoint in your on trigger enter, which is what I did here, and you can see just what you are interacting with. So this is, of course, a pause point. Let me show you some of the great tools that Rider has for you when you're just doing normal debugging. So let me choose a normal breakpoint, and then I'm just going to go into the finish line once again. So you could see I hit my breakpoint now because I unpaused the game. And what's really cool here is the debugging tools that are available here. So of course, you can just hover over an, a variable, open it, and go through it. So you can, for example, see that the left leg of our rigid body of the player is hitting the finish line at this moment. What's also really cool is um, you, of course, have your default uh, expressions you can use. So you can do things like actual queries. For example, other dot name is test, and it will return you false because it's not the, the name of the other object. And the debugging tools available here are actually top notch, in my opinion. Another great feature about Rider is its Git integration. Sure, you can be the typical IT nerd and say, I do everything with Terminal, but for a lot of things, a UI is really, really helpful. It handles a lot of things really well. For example, if there are merge conflicts, you can just solve them right from the IDE. And the way it handles merge conflicts is actually really good in my opinion. So don't be like Palworld or 90% of all indie devs out there and use Git and use Rider's tool to achieve version control. Last but definitely not least, it's probably the best feature of them all, is you can, just like Palworld, have legally distinct creatures right in your IDE because Rider supports customizations and plugins. So if you go to settings, you have a cool tab called plugins. And then you get the marketplace and you can see boring things like Azure Toolkit for Rider, AWS, and of course it's all neatly integrated and you can do everything from there. But we're of course here for legally distinct creatures as our ProCast bar. So you can easily install some packages that will change the way your progress bar looks and it looks very fun. And of course you can do toolbars, but there's more that uh, Rider has to offer in plugins. For example, you have Teams. I am a dark mode user, Marcus is a light mode user. You might find some entirely different team that suits your needs. Or you can do, while I was memeing about it a bit, actual integrations with things like Azure and so on for your main job. Because if you're like me, you also just do a full-time dev job on the side. It's really useful to use the same software for your main job and of course for your game dev adventures. And those are some of the reasons why we here at Bite Me Games love Rider. Of course, you are completely free to try it out right now because, hey, it is literally free for non-commercial use. 
So please give it a go and let us know what you think and what you like about it. Of course, thank you so much JetBrains for sponsoring this video and yeah, for giving us Ryder. We pay for Ryder. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye.